Good morning, welcome to the update for the bunker. It's Tuesday the 28th of April and uh, it's rained here in the, the Moselle, which is a uh, welcome relief actually from the, from the heat. But what it means is that all the pollen that had collected on the cars has now turned to a, like a mud, a mush. So we've probably got to go and hose them off or something like that at some point. But uh, it's rained and the garden looks better for it. And uh, it's really humid now, though it's really steamy. So uh, anyway, it's rained, all is good. I hope you guys are okay as well. And uh, looking at the, uh, the way people are communicating around this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation is, uh, has been a mixed bag, a real mixed bag. And in terms of leadership, if you've got a team of people or you're running a business or you need to um, give news to people, uh, a couple of things, a couple of tips that I, I learned in my, my career as a, an operations manager working in the manufacturing sector. I remember once there was a company, my, my job was a, as like a, a troubleshooter to go around the group and uh, run shut, fix, whatever it was, and the divisions that weren't doing very well. And uh, one particular company was struggling uh, quite badly, the numbers were all over the place. And so I was uh, invited to go and uh, sort it out. I was up in, uh, in Rochdale, live the dream, eh, live the dream. And uh, this is donkey's years ago. Anyway, my director said, go, on, go up there, get your hotel booked, get packed, you're going up there, stay there during the week, come back home at weekends, 12 month gig, get it sorted, away you go. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, he drove me up there. And while we're driving up there, we, I lived in uh, Bristol at the time, was uh, to go uh, and just talk about the, the numbers and the approach and all this sort of thing and the balance sheet to go through, whatever it was. And that was all very good, exciting. And we got into the, about, on the uh, motorway, about 20 minutes away from the, uh, the, the, the factory. And Paul, who my director, phoned up on the old, remember the old Motorola car phones that were hardwired into the car? Anyway, he had one of those. He thought it was so cool. And he, he phoned ahead and he spoke to one of the, uh, the, the guys there. Can you get everybody into the car park for when we arrive in about 10, 15 minutes? And there, were, there would have been about um, 80, 90 people there, I suppose, at the time. And uh, anyway, when we got there, we put up in the car park. It was a nice sunny day. And uh, they all stood there, you know, green overalls, all this sort of thing in the car park, having no idea what was going to go on. And uh, we pulled up and uh, Paul got out introduced himself, told him who I was, and he got a can of paint out of the boot of the car in the, in, in the car park, and he painted a line down the car park, a yellow line, I think it was, down the middle of the car park, and he got on a little box, and he said, okay, guys, you've got some bad news for you, and we've got some good news for you, oh, crikey, so he stood upon this little box, he said, first of all, your, oper your current operation manager's been fired, and uh, he won't be coming back again, you won't be seeing him, he's gone, I had to do that the day before. So he's gone, he's not coming back again. And he said, uh, this is your new operations manager. Pointed at me over here, thanks very much. Welcome to the, welcome to the gang. And he said, uh, now we're gonna have to make some cuts, some, some cost cuts, and we're gonna lose some people. He said, so you know, right now, before you do anything, you've got a choice, you can stay with us, or you can leave if you choose to leave. Well, then we'll give you your check, you'll we'll give you your P45, and you can leave the site immediately. If you come, if you stay with us, then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna fight for this thing. He said, so now you've got five minutes to choose and you're either on this side of the line to stay in the company or this side of the line to leave the company. Oh, my goodness, what's going on? Anyway, the, the, the waters parted. About 30 people decided they wanted to leave and the other people wanted to stay. So we gave more the envelopes. The 30 people left and there's about 55, 60 people left. And then Paul stood up again and after they'd left the site, the other people had left the site. And he said, look, he said, one promise I make to you, he said, he said, this is my best operations manager. I'm backing him, he's backing you, he said, no more job losses, do what we ask you, dig in, fight with us, and I guarantee no more job losses. Jumped to his car, and off he went, and I'm stood in the car park with 55 people who were thinking, what the heck was all that? That all took about 15 minutes. So I uh, went back into the office, and we got everybody together again, and they're all they're highly emotional, highly charged. And one of the guys came to me, he was a forklift driver, I think, from memory, and he said to me, he said, that was bloody brilliant. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> brilliant he said you know what he said the previous operations guys we've had here they never told us what was going on it was always rumor it was always hearsay it was always assumptions." he said but you guys turn up and you might we might not like it he said but you told us exactly what the bad news was and you gave us hope he said you give us hope and we'll work with you and i thought wow that's a very powerful story and we turned it around it was, it was good it was okay we actually got some people to come come back as we grew along and um, and actually, it wasn't the problem with the people in the company. It was a problem with management, the previous management of the company. And uh, we sorted that out. And then the business uh, thrived and off it went. But the message really was, I think, if you're going to give people, if you've got to give people bad news, give it to them. Not, don't, you don't have to be unkind and horrible about it. And don't text them about it. But if you're going to give them bad news, 
tell them, let them deal with it, get it out of the way, get it done, allow them to move on and so you can move on, get it out of the way. But also, if you're going to give people bad news, also where you can, you've got to give people hope. You've got to give people good news as well and be absolutely clear about it. And once they have hope, then you can they'll, they'll work with you, they'll work for you, they'll fight for you if you give them hope. And I think now through this uh, pandemic, we can now start to hope that, it's, that the, the, uh, the uh, restrictions are going to be relaxed. We can hope that things are going to get a bit better. It won't go back to how it was before, 100%, I don't think. Well, in some, times, in some ways, we hope it won't go back to 100%. But we can now hope that things will improve and develop. Shops are beginning to open. Businesses are relaxing a little bit. Yes, we've got to take precautions. And I think the face masks and social distancing will stay in place for some time, just my, my guess. But we've got hope. With hope comes positivity, with hope comes potential. So if you're leading a team of people, you don't have to, don't lie to them, don't give them false hope. But there are a lot of bad news over the last few weeks. And, you know, give them, be really clear about that. If it is bad news, then tell them. But if it's good news and hope, tell them that as well. Give them hope, give them regular updates, communicate regularly. When we had this business up in, the, in Rochdale, we had daily uh, get-togethers on the shop floor. First 20 minutes of each day, I was on a little box telling them exactly what was happening with the clients, the customers, the cash flow, the balance sheet. They knew about debtors. They knew about everything in the business. And we told them as we went along, that reduced a little bit. We did it once a week in the end. And I think they really appreciated it. And uh, it helped. They helped us. And we helped them. So bad news, if you've got to give it, be human, be kind about it. Do it face to face if you can or over video if you've got to give bad news. But give them hope as well. Give them good news and keep communicating. Let them know what's going on and uh, they'll support you. So a couple of tips I learned from my uh, journey in operations management. By the way, you can't do that nowadays. I'm pretty sure you can't draw white lines or yellow lines in a car park and park the waters. I'm not allowed to do that now. And I'm not sure we were allowed to do it back then. But anyway, we did it. Oh, Paul did it. So uh, anyway, there we go. So a uh, bit, uh, bit of updates on leadership for you. I hope that was of interest and uh, a bit, some tips we're using for you. Uh, have a great day. It is beginning to rain again here, so it's all very good. And uh, stay away from people. Stay safe. Wear those face masks. And I'll speak to you, see you hopefully tomorrow on uh, what will be uh, Wednesday. So take care for now and uh, see you soon. Bye for now.